This is Euchre, and she's now six months old. Do you remember the day we brought her home? In today's video, I'm gonna give you a little update on how Euchre's training is going, but I also wanna share with you the top things that you need to focus on in the next few months of puppy training with your dog. I'm gonna share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of how our training is going. Now, she is doing really well in a lot of areas, but there's still a few challenges that I'm facing, and it's important that I share those with you. So let's get to that puppy update. I'm Kale McCann. This is six-month-old puppy, Euchre. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now, when we talk about socialization with young puppies, a lot of people assume that that means that they need to get their dog or their puppy around other dogs. And when we think about socialization and what we did with her when she was younger is we were focused more on experiences rather than interaction. So yes, I wanted to get her used to other people and other dogs, but we also wanted to work on different locations, different footings, making sure that she was very comfortable in new situations. So that was the main focus when she was a little bit younger. During that time, my soul purpose was to have a strong bond and relationship with her as well so that as she experiences new things or people or places or whatnot I have enough control and enough of a bond with her that if she does get into a bit of a sticky sticky situation she's more likely to lean on me for guidance rather than just forget I exist and do her own thing so the bond and the training comes first and then from there we start to give her more experiences now she's six and a half months old now and some of the um, socialization that we've done with her is we have started to let her spend a little bit more time with our other pack of dogs. She's learning how to interact with them appropriately. She's learned to be, learning to be respectful good girl. Even just sitting here on this deck has been great because there's lots of cars and people that are passing pa passing by. I want to reward her for just hanging out and being calm. I also have a few friends that have dogs that are similar age and similar play style and we've given her an opportunity to have a little play with them as well. And um, to the best of our ability, we're trying to allow her to meet new people. But we needed to make sure that we could do things like teaching her to sit on a loose leash, not to jump up. So as she's meeting new people, she's also learning how to be appropriate. So She's starting to gain a lot of those experiences now that she's a little bit older, but what's been great about it is we have a few skills underneath our belt which allow those experiences to go a lot more successful. Now, another area that we've had to work really hard on is that of jumping up. Now, Euchre is a super friendly dog, so this was a challenging one for us and something that we've been working on since she was a young puppy. And I'm very happy to say that she is doing really well with this. She's still super friendly with people, but she does now understand at six months old that if you rush up to somebody you need to be sitting in order for somebody to say hello to you now we actually have a great video uh, on this subject that we used her for um, it's basically about a training target and the different process that you need to go through to help your dog to learn not to jump up when people are approaching them to say hello so you should definitely check that out if it's something that you're struggling on with your dog but in the initial stages prevention is really really important try to stop that behavior from happening and in the meantime give your dog an alternative options so that they can still be excited and, and happy to see people but they need to know what to do differently instead of jumping in order to uh, make better choices. Now a lot of people really struggle with chewing with their young puppies and I'll be honest this isn't something that we've had too many issues with but I think that there's a couple really important reasons as to why. Number one her freedom in our house was very limited when she was a puppy and she always 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 had some type of leash or line on her when she was out of her crate. And there was certainly times where she attempted to chew things or steal things off the top of her crate or um, she was successful at stealing the to toilet paper roll um, out of the bathroom at one point uh, but because we were very good at supervising her we were able to predict when she was thinking about chewing something or stealing something and we were able to catch her in the act and redirect her so it didn't take very long for her to understand which things were okay for her to chew and which things were not the other thing that we found very helpful is that we gave her limited chew toys to play with at a time so rather than having this huge smorgasbord of things to play with she just had a couple things to play with at a time so it was really for easy for her to know what was hers and we would rotate them often to keep her interested she's sort of funny she definitely has you know a toy or a bone of the week where she gets really obsessive with one or two toys and then the sort of novelty wears off and then we just bring a couple more in and that helps to keep her interested now the next thing that we did to kind of control her chewing 
was we would use baby gates in our house. So she was not allowed to uh, just roam free in our downstairs. We would give her access to our kitchen when we were in there with her, but she couldn't just wander into the living room when she wanted. Now she's six and a half months old now and she's doing much better in terms of her house training and her chewing. So we've now opened the baby gates up and she is allowed to come into the living room and I can see that she's in here lying on a bed, chewing on a bone, but we always keep our eye on her to make sure that she's not sneaking away and getting into mischief. So puppy proofing your house is gonna be really important, but also making sure that they've earned that opportunity to have more freedom in the house is going to allow the dog to be free and make less mistakes as you move along. Now, the next point I wanna cover is your puppy's recall. Now, this is something that we have been working on with Euchre since the second day that we brought her home. But what her recall looks like now is a lot different than what it was when she was a puppy. Now, in the early stages of teaching her a recall to come reliably when we called her was setting her up so that she was successful all of the time. So we did, you know, look back, looking back, you'll see we did things like restraint recalls back and forth. We, um, you know, started in really low in, uh, distraction environments and then we progressed from there. We're going on our very first prop walk at the training school, a very mini prop walk, of course. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> so cute. And then I started working on, you know, just walking around my, my property and letting her drag a long line and then calling her and letting her chase me and then playing a game of tug as her reward. But all of her recall training was done in an isolated way where I could control the level of distraction. So our other dogs weren't around. We were in limited space so that it was really easy for her to be, be right. And the reason why this was important is that I needed to teach her that coming to me was the best thing. Now, she's six and a half months old and we have now made some really great progressions. We've changed locations. I practice in a bunch of different places and one of the places that is, was a biggest challenge for her was at our dog training school. We have quite a bit of property there. There's a lot of open space, a lot of room to run and when we first started there it was like this giant playground and she didn't really know what to do with herself. So when we brought her there, Again, we didn't um, bring the other dogs into a mix. That was a little bit too exciting for her in the beginning. Hi, babe. Um, but we did have her on a long line and we would just practice in more quiet places in the property, making sure that she was reliable. And then over the last couple months, we have slowly started to integrate some of our other dogs into the mix to provide more distractions. We started with some of the more boring dogs that just sort of dawdle along, some of the older dogs that aren't that interested in playing with her so that she could just get comfortable listening around them. And now we've worked up to being able to go for walks, our casual walks around the property with the whole pack with Euchre included. Yes. Um, now to ensure that we have good control though, while we do this, she does wear a really long line and I'm always armed with some really high value rewards. And we spend a lot of time calling her back. Every couple of minutes we're calling her back to reinforce. And what I've been so pleased about is that because she starts to learn the game, she actually goes out and then stops and checks in with me and sort of waits for me to call her back because because she knows good things happen. So rather than putting her in a situation where she's around other dogs and she kind of forgets that I exist, I need to know that if I have to call her back for some reason, whether it's for control or maybe even for her safety, that she comes back quickly and reliably each and every time. But that has been something that I've worked on over several months in order to get to the spot where we are. Now, goals is that we are able to work off leash eventually, but for now, I actually think she's doing an awesome job. Um, one thing that we will do though, just to ensure that we're not over facing her is we still do lots of walks individually. So I don't always walk with the other dogs. That's like a special treat that we do. Often we'll just go out one-on-one. -on -one. We'll play a little game of fetch while we're out there, just continuing to making sure that our, our bond is strong and that recall is always reliable. Now, a big thing that I've noticed with her being six months versus when she was a puppy is she has a way more energy now and it's girl and it's a lot harder to tire her out to the point where we actually see her come and settle in the house but one thing around one thing that I've really learned with her is that oh good job Euchre is that taking her for just like a little walk around the block just does not do it that's great for her training it's good for her socialization but it does not tire her out so we try to play a little game of retrieve every single day. I don't just throw the toy mindlessly like this for her. Um, sometimes I'll make her do some obedience training. So sit, good girl, wait. Yes. 
Okay, yay. So I make her think a little bit about what she's doing because I personally find that physical activity is really good, but when I combine that out around with mental activity where she's um, thinking about what she's doing, she has to so show some self-control, I'm implementing some brain work or some problem solving, she's way more tired. And so we try to think about um, how we can implement this type of thing every single day into her schedule because it just allows her to be calmer and more relaxed Relaxed in the house. Um, it also find I also find that I don't have to create her as much. So sometimes if she's too busy because she hasn't had enough exercise or enough work, she's annoying in the house. And you know, and they're just wanting to put her in the crate. And I don't want to have to do that all the time. So doing a few little fun games to kind of take the edge off. Also, this is a great way. Okay, we're building a bond by doing this rather than taking her and letting her run around and forget about me. Yay! Come on, girl. This is a fun thing that we get to do together every day. Um, and that means that she's a little bit more tired and she can go in and chill out and relax while we get things done. And I don't necessarily have to put her in the crate. Now we know that dog training is not a linear experience and it's possible that things will go really well with your puppy. And then all of a sudden it, it doesn't. And that's something that we always keep in mind with her. You know, if she starts to regress in a few areas, we're simply gonna put the house line back on and follow through where needed. Now the age of the dog in which you start to off of the house line or remove the use of the crate it really doesn't depend on the age it's more about the dog specifically you might have some dogs that take a little longer you might have some dogs that you know power through these steps very easily a lot of it has to do with their personality and sometimes a lot of it has to do with you and how consistent you are how reliable are you with your rules um, how um, much do you follow through with some of those things with your puppy so that it's <laughs> <laughs> you are going to fall right off the couch, you turkey. Um, how easy is it for the dog to understand what their rules are? So try not to make this about the age of the puppy. Try to think about the behavior. Is their behavior worth giving them a little bit more freedom? And if things start to regress, no big deal. You're just going to dial back. You're going to resort back to using your crate a little bit more often. Maybe use your leash a little bit more often. And then after a few weeks of success goes by, give it another go. And hopefully you'll be uh, ready from there. Now you might think that because we're professional dog trainers, we'll have a perfectly trained dog at six months old, but that's just not how it works. All dogs are different. We've definitely seen a few different challenges with Euchre than we've even seen with some of our dogs in the past. So although she's doing great in a lot of areas, there are definitely a few things that we are still working on. So I'm gonna to talk to you about a few of those areas. Now, something you may have heard us mention about Euchre before is that she's very stimulated by anything that moves. And although you might not think that right now but um, you know when she's around moving cars or anything that moves fast or has a motor she gets really stimulated and this has provided a few challenges for us when we're out on walks and we've really had to work on specifically going to areas where um, it's not super busy so that we can get a little bit more success and then slowly working on getting her around areas where there's more car cars so for example sometimes just part of her walk is standing out on the corner where there's cars that pass by and just rewarding her her for sitting calmly beside us on a loose leash. We don't even work on the walking part, we just work on the focus part. And then from there we can add a little bit more walking. So that's still a work in progress, she's doing really well. And in order to make sure that we're moving forward, we're just controlling how and when we walk her. So if I know that there's a lot of busyness, there's a lot of, um, it's a pretty busy part of the day, there's gonna be a lot of people out on the street, those are not times where I'll typically go out and practice. I try to go for quieter areas at this point so that when she's going out, she's rehearsing the good stuff um, and that seems to be working really well to our advantage. If you're struggling with walking on leash with your dog, one of the best things to think about is not rehearsing the bad stuff. So try not just to go out for walks because you know you need to walk your dog. You really need to think about training. One thing that really helped her was isolating the behavior. So without many distractions around, I really wanted to make sure she understood what my expectation was when we were walking, where she should walk, how her leash should be, where she should be looking, to stop and sit at my side. Those types of behaviors need to be perfected so that when I'm out and about Around more distractions, I have some skills to fall back on. So my best advice for you is to isolate that behavior. Make sure that you're working so your dog clearly understands what you expect of them during your walking exercises, and then start to implement the distractions gradually so that your dog can see success. It's much better to repeat successful repetitions than to get your dog into a scenario where you know they're gonna fail because you're just gonna end up both get, getting frustrated. Another thing that she's still struggling with is the ability to just chill out in all situations. 
situations. There's a few portions of her life where she is able to go and lie down on her bed. Like when we're eating dinner, if we've just come out inside from having exercise, she's really good in those moments. But you know, if she hasn't had enough exercise or we want to sit down and you know, watch a lengthy movie, she isn't able to just go and lie down and have a nap during that process. You know, she's a young, energetic breed, an energetic dog. And so we haven't been able to be successful at that. So I basically have two options to work through that. Number one, I could put her leash on and I could train her and teach her how to do that. Or number two, maybe I just want to sit down and watch a movie and not worry about the dog. She does settle really well in her crate, which is what I will choose to do if I'm not in a position where I want to be working through it. And what I don't want to do is just say, oh, I'm frustrated with you and just let her continue to be bopping around the house because I don't want her rehearsing those behaviors. So if you have a busy dog, think about, you know, what you're doing prior to the time where you want your dog to chill out. Have they had enough exercise? Have they had training? And then in that moment, decide whether you're going to train through it or whether you just want to abort mission and put them in their crate. That is okay too, because as they get older and more trained, those crate um, times will be less and the uh, opportunity to be out and just sort of chill with you will become more and more and more, but it's not just an overnight process. Something like that, especially with really energetic dogs, does take time you just have to be patient. Now it's been fun sharing this little six month update about Miss Euchre here, but if this is your first time watching our channel, you may not know, but we've actually been documenting Euchre's training all the way from the beginning, from that first day that we brought her home. So if you wanna check out that video, click that card right here. Now, if you'd like some step-by-step -step instruction on some of the exercises that we trained in today's video, make sure you check out our Life Skills Online Program. You're gonna have access to our professional trainers where you can ask your questions and get answers every single single day to make sure you're on the right track. The link for that is in the description below. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Euchre. Happy training.